Hello, Darkfish friends. Rally Croatia is done and dusted. It has been a very, very tough week for everyone here, but let's start by talking about the competitive side of things this week because once again, Rally Croatia has given us Luke Barry, the most remarkably challenging and, you know, entertaining rally. It has had a lot for us to get excited about. Yeah, we've not been short of things to, to talk about and it is a feature of this rally. We've seen it in the past and it was nice to see this weekend that it was gone three from three and producing, I would say it's becoming a modern classic almost on the calendar column for me, Croatia. I think it's, it's always been entertaining and a great, great result for the winner. I really would agree with you there. It is becoming a, a modern classic. What I like about this rally is its unpredictability. The fact that it brings back into rallying an element of strategy. It's not one of those rallies that's become a sprint rally, if you like. You do have to think your way through it. Yeah, you do, because the different kind of surfaces you get, the way that the cuts change the road surface, there's always challenges lurking. I've loaned the, can I have the word? The loan, it's okay, okay. Not, it's, it's my word. The jeopardy in the corners is, is real for everybody to see here. The first to second pass condition is always very different with the mud on all the corners. So yeah, always a very challenging rally. And this year was no different. Yeah, and you know what? We, you, I've heard the accusation leveled against tarmac rallies in the past that they can be a touch boring. Not this one. No. Not this one, far from it. I think every single loop of stages, bar perhaps this morning's loop, uh, we had plenty to talk about, plenty to digest, didn't yep, we? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we don't know what the future is for the Croatian rally, but as you said, it is becoming a little bit of a modern classic. You know, I think the, the championship needs variety. The championship needs challenges. Uh, and for me, this rally provides that in absolute bucket loads. And I would love to see it back here. I understand that these days it is about economics, supply and demand says there are more rallies that want to be in the championship yeah. than the championship can cater for so you know, it will come down to economics but i'm keeping my fingers crossed that we're back here next year me too me too so in terms of the event this year we have to start first of all and talk about toyota and elvin evans many many congratulations to elvin evans and to scott martin first time they've taken a win since finland 21 yep finland 21 and a little bit of icing on the top, the cherry on the top. They lead the championship. It's a joint lead with Sebastian Ogier. This was such an important win for Elvin Evans for many, many reasons. Look, but I talked about strategy. This being a strategic rally, he was a long way off the fastest driver, but he was the best driver out there this week. Well, that's exactly it, isn't it? He was the only one of our sort of leading five drivers who didn't run into really any kind of troubles at all. There was a little bit of time on Saturday afternoon we thought Tanak was probably going to potentially pounce and pass him, but Evans kept his cool and there were no mistakes. Everything just was under control, I think is the best way to put it. And, and as you say, the first time he's won in, in 18 months. So what that will do for his confidence doesn't really need you or I to, to explain. It's going to be a big difference for him. He's, he's really learning how to put a championship challenge together. Now that might seem a bit odd considering he's had two years where he's gone to the final round with a chance of winning and who can forget 2020 where he was almost the favourite to win, went into the last round leading it. But it is with a level of competition these days, it's about consistency. You know, you have to pick and choose your moments where you're going to take risks and maybe last year maybe his decision making in that regard wasn't maybe as good as it could have been took a few too many risks that didn't pay off this year he knows that it's all about consistency the car is still quite a way away from his liking but as long as he keeps scoring these points picking up the odd win here and there when the car does come to him you know who knows where he can go but it is a properly thought through championship challenge. It is, and it has to be this year with how incredibly close it is between all of them. It's it's going to be fascinating, that's what we want. We were saying it to, we said it to our defending champion, Kyrie Wolfenpera, this time last year, it was basically his to lose. Now, yeah, it could absolutely. be anybody's. Well, listen, we caught up with Elvin Evans at the end of the event. This is what he had to say. It's hard to um, know what to feel, uh, to be honest, at the moment. Uh, it's been a hard week for for everybody, uh, there's one side of the coin, of course, which is the relief of, of having the first win for a while. And then, of course, the overwhelming emotion after it's all winding down now, of course, is the, the news of last week again. So, you know, it's uh, it's hard to know what to what to feel. Um, but, yeah, of course, nonetheless, we're, we're pleased, obviously, to finally put a rally one uh, win on the board. Um, 
and uh, and yeah, uh, it's it's obviously come at a, at a good time. Leading the championship again for the first time for really quite some time. Uh, you're back in charge almost. I wouldn't say I'm in charge, but uh, you know, at least it's been uh, much more. Uh, reminiscent of, of what I was, uh, let's say, strong at in the past, was always scoring consistently, always being there or thereabouts. Um, of course, there's still work to do. I mean, uh, I can't say I'm fully satisfied with the whole weekend, but uh, nonetheless, it's a good point on the board. So many congratulations to Elvin and the Toyota team. Do you know what? We will talk a little bit about Craig clearly at the end of this review but so fitting really so so fitting that elvin and in particular scott martin who co-drove for craig for so many years that they did take the win here uh, on such an enormously emotional weekend toyota should they be concerned Luke? because all three four, let's take takasan out of the equation for just now there are three top drivers and they all had moments where they weren't too happy with the car is that indicative of the rally one formula or is that something that maybe Toyota need to be concerned about? It's probably a bit of both, to be fair. But I guess if you're Toyota, the, the sort of icing on the cake or the counterpoint to that would be that Neville wasn't happy with his high and die. Tanak's not happy with the Puma completely. No. So it's not as if I say it's the rally one. It's not an exclusion no. issue, is it? No, it's <laughs> not. But it is interesting to hear that obviously OJ tried something different with the tyres on the Paris stage. Rob and Perra thinks that the, the biggest sort of Concern is too strong a word, I think, but he's the biggest one that's interesting, intriguing as to what's mm. going on there, because he's clearly not quite as happy as he was this time last year. But just wasn't happy with the setup he went for for the event and with the way it is now with the formula. He's kind of locked into that for the entire rally, so they can do all they can to get around it, but yeah. finding the perfect fix is basically impossible if the testing goes wrong for you. Yeah, no, I think what Robin Bear has learned here is to trust his instincts mm. in terms of the setup. He went with advice on the setup. He had a look at Elvin, he had a look at Seb. And by the sound of things, he compromised his setup to go further towards them. And I think what he's learned is stick with your gut instincts. He's now experienced enough, he's brilliant enough to actually dictate his own setup. Yeah. And I get the feeling that maybe that was his learning from the weekend. Probably. And as you say, it's. I guess for him the issue was what happened on Friday with the tie going down on him after the compression. So from there the weekend was always going to be a struggle. But he did manage to hold off Sebastian Oje for fourth place. So that he again, is. and Oje, we know how good he is at the moment. So Absolutely. that's the positive as well for him. Manufacturer points and again the additional manufacturer points, second and third for am I right, Oje and Cali in the bar stage? I think they no, were. You, you I'm pretty it. sure I was. Yeah. Pretty sure I'm right in that. You know, a really good job for the team this weekend. Let's move on to M Sport and to our Tanak. Goodness me, we thought for a little while yesterday that he really was going to show us again one of these miraculous drives where he just battles away, throws everything at it and takes the win. It wasn't the win, it wasn't to be. He had those issues Saturday afternoon. Uh, but again, an encouraging weekend, I think. I think Oik was at one point almost happy with his car, yeah. which, which we haven't seen for years. <laughs> No, and, and this is the thing is, you were saying it to us, he's almost daring not to smile no. to show the engineers that you might have been happy. But as you say, the, the rhythm he found on Saturday, particularly in the afternoon, was incredible. I think we did all think the rally was potentially going to be his. The issues, yes, are disappointed, but to me, I think the the real danger for the rest is Tanak's able to get these results when things still aren't quite mm. right. So if things do become 100% correct for him, well, I think he's going to be potentially a favourite for the title, but it all depends on whether you can get everything lined up properly. And there's a few things there. Obviously, they have to get the car to his liking in terms of the setup. They then have to work on these niggling little, little issues that could become very, very costly. Yeah. And it's so un M Sport like. So, you know, I, I'm absolutely in no doubt they will sort those niggling issues out. We caught up with Oit just a few moments ago. It did look as if there were real positive signs of improvement in terms of the pace of the car at times out there. Yeah, but it's uh, it's just the case at the moment. It's just at the times, and uh, it looks like in a very small window. So uh, it's it's still difficult to understand where the sweet spot of the car is. That's obviously still work in progress. How confident are you that they can actually give you that and to keep you in this fight, this incredible fight for the championship? I mean, yeah. So so far, somehow we've been able to to stay in touch, uh, which has been obviously uh, positive. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is not going to to stay like this forever. You know, if we don't find some actual performance that we would take the fight for the others. So uh, 
let's see. Let's see what's coming. What is coming? No idea. <laughs> you must have Next some idea. Australia is coming, Portugal is coming. What's coming in terms of improvement? Uh, we need to ask from the, from Chris Williams. Yeah, do you know what? Not a bad weekend all round for M Sport. Pierre-Louis Lube bringing his car home. He had a few things to deal with this weekend. He had a little issue this morning. He hit a rock, bent something, uh, and he had to work through that. A couple of bad tyre choices. But Lube can take some encouragement from the week. I think so, and I think the best thing for him actually is he looks ahead to what's coming next in Portugal. He's got a good road position there, and he's gone well in the past on hot gravel rallies where he started quite yes. low down on the Friday running order. And he's so, very confident. He I was is. what he said to you. <laughs> he was, yeah, he's very bullish. Like, was it a minimum top four he wanted to minimum get? Minimum so, top four. Yeah. Targeting potentially a podium yeah. in Portugal. And do you know what? Not impossible. Let's move on <laughs> to uh, obviously high on that. Listen, the most challenging week that any motorsport outfit can face. And massive credit to everyone at Hyundai from the top down for the way they have dealt with such difficult and challenging circumstances. The tributes that they paid to Craig were absolutely fitting, absolutely perfect, and in abundance. They were everywhere around the service park. The way they got on with the job when the rally started was an absolute credit to them all, to their professionalism. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are tough days ahead when we all go home from the rally and we have a little bit of time off and we have time to think about the loss of Craig. That's when I think it'll hit a lot of people hard. But, you know, back to the sporting aspect, Thierry Neuville was desperate to win this one. Is there a suggestion, Look, that he was a little bit, is it fair to, could, it, could he be a little too desperate? Did he push a little too hard, perhaps? He does look really disappointed what happened, and I, I can understand that, but I think, honestly, what he's done, particularly with the Paris stage win, I think he can be proud that he's done what he could have done to make Craig proud, and I think he has done that, but, yeah, with the error, it's, it is obviously a massive, massive shame, but it's one of those for me. I think it is one of those. He's, when you're pushing at this level, I think he said it already, but mistakes are bound to happen so I think yeah it's just one of those things and you'll move on to Portugal in a, in a decent road position and it should go well from there as well. should go well from only 10 points or so off the lead in terms of the championship um, but again you're another driver who is giving his team a little chivvy along in terms of the development on the car he said we've still got a lot of work to do by the way I'm sure everything you just said was fabulous I hardly heard you <laughs> with these cars behind I am going deaf as well which doesn't help yeah Neuville still pushing the team to bring forward more developments in that car, just to give him that chance. It is shaping up to be the most remarkable year in terms of the championship, and Neville is right there. He knows he's got an enormous chance of taking his first world title this year. Award for Esapeka Lappi as well, because Esapeka Lappi, third place on the podium. Just the most tenacious performance yeah. from Lappi out there. Yeah, and he had to battle through a lot, I think. He said at the end of Shakedown that every single driver dealt with the events of the last week differently and I think it was really hitting Lappi quite hard but once he got into the rally he knew game face was on and he was doing it for all the right reasons and I have to say it's it's a shame for Hyundai they didn't get the win but I'm really glad they could at least get a podium so silverware to remember what has been a very, very difficult week for them. Absolutely right indeed. Let's hear from Esapeka Lappi. This is not my strongest surface, dirty tarmac, so I, I want to be realistic also on myself. Um, and, and this strategy worked in, in Ypres last year and, and here as well now. So you need to understand where, where your skills are and, and cope with that. Well, in sporting sense, it has been another really, really entertaining week of rallying here in Croatia. Don't forget, folks, uh, this evening, Sunday evening, you're watching this on Sunday evening through the night and you want a little bit more rallying. We are covering the Olympus Rally in North America. Uh, there's a button there. Press that button and you can have a look at our videos. You can also go to our Dirtfish Live Center. Dirtfish.com, drop down menu. You'll see the Dirtfish Live Center button. Press it there uh, and enjoy our coverage of the Olympus Rally. Folks, the most trying week that many, many of us can remember. Craig Breen was a great friend of everyone in the service park. He was a personal friend of many of us, and we missed him tremendously, but there's a little bit of Craig Breen in all of our hearts, and it will always stay there, always stay there, no matter uh, you know what happens in the world of rallying, we will take Craig along with us. Folks, thank you very much for joining us here at Rally Croatia.